In this series, we'll be going over the cards banned in the commons only format, Popper, and discussing why they're banned and if they can be unbanned today. This video will finish going through some of the cards that were banned after already existing for an extended time in the Popper metagame. We'll also touch on how multiplayer design mechanics often led to cards being banned in the format as we cover the last few cards of this list and some of the most recent bans in the format. First, we have Sojourner's Companion. This artifact creature costs 7 generic mana for a Salamander with 4 power and toughness. It has affinity for artifacts, which reduces its mana cost by the number of artifacts you control. By paying 2 generic mana and discarding Soldier's Companion, you can use its artifact land cycling ability to search your library for an artifact land card and add it to your hand. It was banned in Popper in September of 2021. Why was Sojourn's Companion banned? Affinity has been a very powerful deck in Popper for years in part thanks to its access to the artifact lands. As both lands and artifacts, they essentially count for double mana when casting an affinity spell like Thoughtcast. These artifact lands are banned in Modern, given they push the speed and consistency of those decks over the edge. However, Popper lacks cards like Mox Opal that really push the artifact lands into being unfair, and instead make up the backbone of Popper's Affinity's game plan. Popper even got new dual-color artifact lands in the form of the Bridge Cycle that came in the same set as Sojourn's Companion. These lands can turn on abilities like Metalcraft and pay for costs that require sacrificing an artifact in a pinch. As such, the land cycling abilities of Sojourn's Companion was invaluable in the early game. Three color affinity decks had a way of searching whatever color they were missing, as well as increasing their artifact count. And the more artifacts you have, the less mana it will cost to cast the future copies of Sojourn's Companion and get aggressive with the undercosted creatures. While affinity decks at the time were not the most dominant decks, it was found that affinity's win rate against anything but the best deck in the format was way too high. As such, when they banned Chatterstorm to hit Storm, they also had to ban an affinity card as well to prevent it from becoming the new best deck. Sojourner's Companion had been in the format for over a year at this point, and while it was by no means the most powerful card in Divinity, it smoothed out the deck's draws and made the actual power of the decks even more potent. In an attempt to preserve Affinity's unique playstyle in the format, they opted to ban Sojourner's Companion in hopes that lower the deck's consistency would be enough to keep it from dominating the format. Could Sojourner's Companion be unbanned? No. Affinity would quickly prove to still be playable even without Sojourner's Companion. More Affinity cards would eventually be added to the ban list that we'll discuss shortly. But even despite multiple hits after Sojourner's Companion, Affinity remains a top tier deck in Popper. If Sojourner's Companion got unbanned, it would simply slot right back into Grixis' Affinity decks and help fix the mana needed to cast Kenku Artificer on turn 3 after casting a removal spell of a different color the turn prior. Currently, 3 color Affinity sees less play than the 2 color blue white builds. This is in part because it's easier to ensure you'll be able to cast all your spells as quickly as possible. Ash Barons and other land cycling cards in the format allow other decks access to mana fixing that Affinity does not have without Sojourner's Companion. It is the only card with artifact land cycling, and no other piece of efficient mana fixing for Affinity could double so easily as an efficient attacker. While it's not the most powerful Affinity card in the ban list, it's hard to imagine unbanning it given how it shores up one of the deck's more glaring weaknesses. That said, if any cards were to be unbanned for Affinity, it would be likely Sojourner's Companion, given its general lower power level compared to the other affinity hits that came after it. How could Sojourner's Companion be fixed to be unbanned? While it would strip away a good bit of what makes the card unique, the ability to artifact land cycle is what really pushes it over the edge. A 7 mana affinity creature is still playable, but not the most exciting card, serving a function most similar to Gurmag Angular in Popper Control decks. However, the addition of relevant land cycling modes push it from just a playable threat to a card that is live at pretty much every stage of the game. Of the two abilities to remove, taking away the land cycling would limit it the most while still leaving room for it to see play in actual popper builds. The next affinity ban came the next year with a Tog. It costs 1 generic and 1 red mana and has 1 power and 2 toughness. A Tog's ability allows you to sacrifice an artifact to give a Tog plus 2 power and toughness until end of turn. It was banned from popper in January of 2022. Why was a Tog banned? Affinity remained dominant in the format even after the abandon of Sojourner's Companion, to the point where decks began mainboarding Dust to Dust and other artifact hit cards to counteract the deck. Popper Affinity had one of the best win rates, and the highest play percentage in the format with every deck either played Affinity or built in some way to try to beat it. A Tog in particular provided a solid win condition, while nowhere near as powerful as Arcbound Ravager, having even a comparable beater at common made it a real threat in the format. But a Tog was rarely played fairly, and often instead gave Affinity a more combo-centric game plan to go for. Fling lets you sacrifice a creature to let it deal its power's damage to any target, meaning if you sacrificed enough artifacts to get a Tog's power higher than your opponent's life, you could fling it for lethal. This alone would have been good, but the recent introduction of Wedding Invitation to Popper provided a way to give a Tog unblockable that synergized with the rest of the deck. Strong opening hands of the Tog could kill within the first few turns, usually when coupled with Disciple of the Vault to heap on even more damage. 
Affinity could fairly consistently hit 20 damage early, and in ways that were not easily interacted with. Some Grixis builds of Affinity even managed to protect their attack combo turns with interaction like Metallic Rebuke. Modern Horizons 2 had pushed Affinity so far over the edge that its old win conditions were now easier to pull off than ever. Atog was chosen as a band to try and push Affinity back to running more fair threats like Carapace Forger and to disincentivize the more combo-oriented plays Affinity had moved towards. Atog didn't force you to build your deck to be any less aggressive, and instead offered fast combo lines built into an otherwise competent aggro deck. Could Atog be unbanned? Probably not. Popper Affinity has generally moved away from the aggressive combo piles that Atog helped facilitate. Not only has this taken multiple cards being banned to accomplish, Atog is undoubtedly the strongest of them. If Atog were to return, the All That Glitters variant of the decks would likely be pushed aside for decks closer in construction to those fast combo builds. Some builds of Affinity like Grixis have fallen out of favor lately, but with Atog back in the format, cards like Blood Fountain would see far more success than they do currently. Unbanning Atog would simply backslide the format right back where it was in 2022. There are some that argue that Affinity could use more bans, so the idea of actually unbanning Atog anytime soon feels unrealistic. All bringing back a Tog would do is give an already powerful deck the tools to also play a combo with the right hands. How could a Tog be fixed to be unbanned? Given the multiple routes of dealing direct damage with a Tog and Popper, the most reasonable solution would be to limit how many times you can activate a Tog's ability. In recent years, there have been more magic cards with restrictions on how many times you can activate a card's ability in a single turn. If a Tog's ability could only be used at sorcery speed, it would not only make it easier to interact with a Tog, but would prevent a Tog from ever being used as an effective blocker, and force the card to almost always play aggro. This would still likely be powerful, so one might consider actively limiting the activations of a Tog to only one or two activations per turn. This would drastically reduce the card's overall playability. But given its use as a combo tool is what makes it so good, it's an important issue to try and address. Two other cards are banned at the same time of a Tog. These cards were both unassuming at the surface, yet for very similar reasons pushed another deck far ahead of the rest of the format. The first is Bonder's Ornament, an artifact that costs 3 generic mana and can tap for 1 mana of any color. You can also pay 4 generic mana and tap Bonder's Ornament to make each player who controls a permanent named Bonder's Ornament draw a card. The second is Prophetic Prism, which costs 2 generic mana and draws a card whenever it enters the battlefield. You can pay 1 generic mana and tap Prophetic Prism to add 1 mana of any color. Both cards were banned in January of 2022. Why were these cards banned? While Affinity was the most popular deck and boasted one of the best win rates in the format, Tron decks actually managed a higher average win rate in the format. While this was in part thanks to most decks focusing their sideboards to beat Affinity and not Tron, the fact remained that Tron was a contender with Affinity in the format, and would be even more powerful once Affinity was weakened. Built around the Urza lands, these decks would leap ahead on mana and aim to have 7 or more mana as early as turn 3. As such, Wizards considered several bans, like Crop Rotation potentially limit the deck's ability to access its signature lands. However, they decided to instead hit both Bonder's Ornament and Prophetic Prism because of how easily they both allow Tron to fix their mana. Typically, Tron is able to reduce a lot of mana, but is more limited by the cards they're able to cast with it, given a large chunk of the mana bases needed to be colorless. While mana-less style cards that tap for mana have existed in Popper for years, both Prophetic Prism and Bonder's Ornament draw you a card and essentially replace themselves, putting them more on par with the already banned Arkham's Astrolabe. Bonder's Ornament in particular is problematic given its card draw was repeatable, it didn't help that Bonder's Ornament was only printed in common due to a technicality. Cards that are printed in every deck during a set of Commander Precons are typically printed as commons, so Bonder's Ornament was a common in those decks despite having a power level not exactly intended for Popper. Prophetic Prism was banned as well due to the lower mana value offering Tron more access to all five colors quicker. Without access to these two powerful artifacts, Tron would have to decide two or three colors to focus on instead of getting to play whatever spells they wanted regardless of color. Could these cards ever be unbanned? The answer to that is probably no. Tron remains a powerful deck with multiple variants in the format. Some build more around powerful sack outlets like Ashnod's Altar, while others play towards powerful game ending threats like Popper All-Star, Olamog's Crusher. Different builds of Tron require different colors of mana to function, and only really exist separate from one another thanks to Tron's inability to play every color at once. If Tron had access to Bonder's Ornament and the like again, then any build of Tron could run a win condition like Dinrova Horror without any need to build their deck around doing so. Instead of having to focus on a specific version of Tron, they'd be able to flex into anything given what the meta called for at the time. At the time these cards were banned, Tron already made great use of mystical teachings to search out specific cards they needed. This powerful card is the backbone of many control strategies, and a version of Tron that still exists today. But with Bonder's Ornament giving you access to every color of mana for minimal cost, Mystical Teachings could search up any silver bullet hate card from the sideboard that you could possibly want. 
Prophetic Prism also notably provides Flicker combo decks another playable artifact that draws a card on Enter the Battlefield, and would likely bolster their strategies as well. Mana Fixing is weaker and popper than most other sanctioned formats. Arkham's Astrolabe set a precedent for how Mana Fixing artifacts can sometimes be a bit too powerful for the format. And while these two only really saw play in dedicated decks and didn't warp the format like Astrolabe, they're still too good to reasonably come back. How could they both be fixed beyond ban? Bonder's Ornament in particular is hard because it's not really meant for Popper in the first place. At surface level, an easy option would be to make the card draw ability cost more mana to activate, but if any deck could play through that nerf, it would be Tron. You'd have to make it cost at least 6 mana to draw a card, and even then, Tron would still likely run it for the mana fixing and use the card draw only to refill an empty hand. A more realistic nerf for both of this and Prophetic Prism would be to limit the mana filtering. If they could only tap for a color of land you control, it would still help fix mana, but still force players to commit to a mana base. Freely filtering into any color while also replacing itself just provides too much for the format. Yet if you just remove the card draw, these cards become worse than cards like Manalith, which are already unplayable in the format. It's a fine line to walk for balancing, especially in the case of Bonder's Ornament, which arguably should have never been printed in the format at all. Prophetic Prism itself is easier to balance, especially if the colors it could tap for were limited, yet both are far from healthy for the format. The next popper ban came in the form of another hit to Affinity. Disciple of the Vault is a human cleric that costs 1 black mana and has 1 power and toughness. Whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose 1 life. It was banned from Popper in March of 2022. Why was Disciple of the Vault banned? Alongside Atog, Disciple of the Vault was one of the main cards which facilitated fast, non-combat kills for Affinity. The two worked in tandem, with Atog sacrificing artifacts to gain power, while Disciple of the Vault pinged the opponent for each one. Wizards assumed removing Atog would be enough to dampen the control potential for the deck. Instead, Affinity just focused even more on Disciple of the Vault, adding cards like Rock Clan Shaman to main boards just to have access to another artifact sack outlet. The Atog ban did little to actually lessen Affinity's play rate. At the time of Disciple of the Vault's banning, Affinity had the highest play rate in Popper on MDG Online, with almost twice as much representation as the second most played deck. Disciple of the Vault escaped being banned alongside Atog since the Wizards didn't want to overcorrect the format. Instead, they wound up overcorrecting and left Affinity with a win condition that was difficult to interact with and far too fast. While other cards like Deadly Dispute have proven potent in Affinity and worth considering for a ban, it was clear the combo side of Affinity was the most glaring problem with the deck. With Disciple banned, Affinity was forced to go back to focusing on combat to secure a win. Now Affinity relies on more conventional win conditions, like a Gear Seeker Serpent that requires investment to play and win via combat. Disciple of the Vault was a win condition that could be played on turn 1, and slowly used to grind down your opponent before suddenly going for the kill with one big combo turn. While Atog was the more explosive of the two cards, Disciple of the Vault was able to dominate the format all by itself. Could Disciple of the Vault be unbanned? Probably no. Much like Atog, Disciple of the Vault facilitates a fast, more combo-oriented playstyle for Affinity that's just too fast for Popper. Affinity still exists as a deck, and if anything, has more varied playstyles and variants now that the centralized best options have been banned. There are too many powerful synergies around sacrificing artifacts for Disciple of the Vault to ever come off the ban list, and not just instantly become the best thing to do for various existing artifact decks. All unbanning Disciple of the Vault would do is take already existing decks and give them more opening hands that can kill you in the first couple of turns. A hand with multiple Disciple of the Vaults can easily snowball out of control. Since it only costs 1 mana, Disciple of the Vault can pressure their opponent's life total quickly, and get in plenty of chip damage before any combos are even in play. Popper is a format that has been defined for years by synergies with artifacts, to a point where Disciple of the Vault realistically can't ever return. How could Disciple of the Vault be fixed beyond ban? The most glaring issue with Disciple of the Vault is its low mana value. Popper being a format of commons often lacks sheer mana efficiency especially when it comes to threats and win conditions. Affinity without Disciple of the Vault focuses on using a high artifact count to make cards like Mirror Enforcer playable. But since Disciple is so low to the ground and offers such a powerful effect, the deck can build around these fast kills. With a mana value of 4 or 5, Disciple of the Vault would be a much more reasonable card, taking time and mana to set up and especially the mid-one's ability to cast multiple copies. This would still likely be a playable card, but would also be more appropriately costed as a top end win condition instead of a card you can begin the game with. Beyond everything discussed in this in the previous videos, the last kind of card on the Popper ban list are the cards that were cards designed for multiplayer that were too good for Popper. Bondra's Ornament was a card that was too strong for Popper that happened to be in a multiplayer product at Common, whereas these next cards were designed with unique mechanics meant for multiplayer that wound up being far too good in Popper. 
the first of which is Fall from Favor. This aura enchantment costs 2 generic and 1 blue mana, and can enchant target creature. When Fall from Favor enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature, and you become the Monarch. The Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, unless the player is the Monarch. It was banned from Popper in January of 2021. Why was Fall from Favor banned? The Monarch mechanic has been a controversial inclusion in Popper since its introduction in Conspiracy, Take the Crown. At the start of the game, no player is the Monarch until a card, like Fall from Favor, grants that player Monarch. When you're the Monarch, you draw a card at the beginning of the end step, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, its controller becomes the Monarch. This mechanic was intended for multiplayer games where four players could all compete for a Monarch. The Monarch would typically have to stave off attacks from three other players to keep their card advantage. In a 1v1 format like Popper, however, there's just the one opponent, and as such, it's far easier to defend your monarchy. This alone led to many of her calling for cards like Entourage of Trust to potentially get banned. And while the mechanic itself has not been outright banned, Fall from Favor was deemed too powerful. For one, its mana value at 3 puts it at a better rate than some of the format's other monarch enablers. Beyond this, most every other monarch spell in Popper offers minimal upsides or no upside at all. Commander Masters brought back the Monarch mechanic and at the same time, essentially created a removal spell in the form of Fall from Favor. If you enchanted a Gurmag Angler, then it would only ever untap if its controller became the Monarch. And since their best attacker is now tapped down, it's much less likely they'll be able to connect and take back the Monarch. Essentially, Fall from Favor both gave you the Monarch and helped protect the Monarchy all at once, providing you removal and draw power as a bonus. Aggro decks were simply pushed out of the format entirely because they wouldn't be able to keep up with the pressure of these slower decks, and would eventually run out of steam once the Monarch began drawing the controller player cards every turn. The only real aggressive decks that had much success were the Bono Blue Aggro decks that also ran the card and took full advantage of it as the best removal spell in the format. While Monarch has remained in the format as a whole, Fall from Favor showed that it doesn't take much for a card with Monarch to be too good. Could Fall from Favor be unbanned? Probably not. As stated above, Monarch is already a mechanic that has proven polarizing. Not only is Fall from Favor too low in mana value, it provides too much in game value over the course of the game to come back. Blue decks in the format already have tools like the Ninja Package to draw cards. These same decks are also home to the best evasive creatures in the format like Spellstead or Sprite, and would simply use Fall from Favor to further snowball advantage to remove creatures with flying or reach. Aggro decks in the format would struggle to play against it, and blue would likely overtake the format as the only color that can really win a full-on aggressive match, which is generally not the space blue inhabits in a format. Fall from Favor simply stifles too many other decks and strategies to not warp the format around it. How could Fall from Favor be fixed to be unbanned? Fall from Favor should not function as a removal spell in Popper. If it tapped down a creature for just a single turn, then it would allow for a swing in tempo without invalidating the creature outright. Stun counters are a good example of a more recent design innovation that helped fix Fall from Favor, replacing this conditional tap effect with giving the creature an enchant a stun counter. This would make the card far less powerful, but simply being a 3 mana permanent that gives you Monarch is arguably enough for it to at least have some serious play consideration by itself. Monarch is so powerful and popper that a card offering much more than just the Monarch itself is generally too good. Finally, the last cards we have to go over are a group of four cards that all share the same mechanic. First is Aerokokra Sneak, a bird rogue which costs three generic and one blue mana, and has one power and four toughness. Stirring Bard is a dragon bard that costs three generic and one red mana, and has zero power and four toughness. Vicious Battle Rager is a dwarf barbarian that costs three generic and one black mana. And finally, Under Dark Explorer is a lizard warrior that costs four generic and one black mana, and has five power and three toughness. Each one has their own keywords or secondary abilities, but the most important thing that ties these cards together is that when they enter the battlefield, you take the initiative. The initiative is a mechanic similar to the Monarch, where once a player has it, another player may take it by dealing combat damage to them. Whenever you take the initiative, and at the beginning of your upkeep while you have it, you venture into Undercity. Each time you do, you progress down a path and trigger the effect of whatever room you entered. They were banned from Popper in September of 2022. Why were these initiative cards banned? The initiative keyword was designed specifically for multiplayer drafts and commander, and had many of the same issues Monarch did with translating to Popper. Only having to stave off one opponent to keep the initiative meant that it was likely for players to snowball an entire game with it. Many of the options in the Undercity are balanced for multiplayer specifically as well, such as the trap option in the Undercity making target player lose 5 life. In the commander format, where you start with 40 life, that's not a huge loss. Meanwhile, in Popper, that's a fourth of your starting life gone in just one trigger. Monarch was powerful for just drawing you a card every turn, whereas Initiative offers everything from card selection to mana production to creature production. Venturing into the Undercity multiple times is a quick way to overwhelm your opponent and overtake the entire game. Many established decks in the format opted to include their in-color initiative cards, such as Delver and Fairies adopting Aarakocra Sneak. 
More problematic for the format, however, were the decks focused on playing these initiative cards often and as early as possible. Dark Ritual is one of the backbone power cards of Popper, one that has been considered for bans multiple times but always escapes given its prominence and popularity in the format. It, alongside Lotus Petal, would provide enough mana to cast any of the four mana initiative creatures, which was the lowest mana value available in Popper for initiative on the first turn of the game. From there, already head on board, you'd usually ride that advantage to an early win. It was decided that, on the seven cards League on Popper that granted initiative, four of them had to be banned. Every four drop initiative creature was banned, leaving Trailblazer's Torch legal due to it being somewhat underwhelming as an equipment. Five mana initiative creatures like Goliath Paladin are just enough slower to set up that they were deemed as not an issue and left in the format. The only initiative creature with a mana value higher of four to be unbanned was Underdark Explorer. It had the best stats of any of the initiative commons, and while five mana was a bit much, black decks in the format were most generally willing to spend the mana thanks to Dark Ritual. Blue black decks entirely focused on initiative used Underdark Explorer as their primary win condition, and as such, it too was banned. Now, could the initiative cards be unbanned? Probably not. As the most recent cards banned in Popper, these cards have not had the time to show they aren't a problem. In the wake of these bannings, the unplayed initiative spells like Goliath Paladin wound up being slotted into a few decks and strategies without warping the format. Taking these spells off the ban list roughly a year after banning them, where their Strictly Worse counterpart still sees play, just doesn't make sense. Initiative as a mechanic has proven powerful enough that higher rarity initiative cards have seen play and gotten even banned in formats like Legacy. The mechanic is incredibly strong in a one versus one match, with many of its abilities bounced from multiplayer, with the assumption that these cards would never see play in any competitive formats. But in practice, initiative has proven to be a mechanic powerful enough it can carry you to a game win almost entirely by itself. How could these cards be fixed to be unbanned? The only feasible answer for these cards without removing initiative would be to make their mana values higher across the board. Five mana initiative cards see limited success in the format already, so it would be safer if these cards increase their mana values by two, bumping them up to six drops on average. This would drastically limit their playability in decks not built around cheating out mana, but given that these spells are only played because they trigger initiative as fast as possible, it's really the only change that could be made. All right, and that's the video. Now we've discussed every card banned in Popper, why they're banned, and what could be done to potentially take them off the ban list. Do you have any ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, please let us know down in the comments below.